So I'm hanging out with Xavier right now because we were trying to do a proof of concept on an alleged exploit that may or may not be real, but before the end of this video, you'll know. Is alleged. Alleged, as we like to say. Um, there was a CVE issued 20191701 over on exploit database. Not fully issued because it's not been verified yet. And that's part of the whole process. First, we think we have a flaw we find in a product, and then we have to explore, does that flaw actually exist? And then what is the mitigation for that? So we're at the exploratory part, and we're gonna do a little exploring here and talk about whether or not we're gonna be able to do some code injection on PSNs, because it's a pretty serious thing, don't you think? I mean, we're talking about code injection. So, wow, we're talking remote about leaving injection. some, right, remote code injection. So we're talking about taking some of our bad code that we know does bad things and putting it into your, your code base. So uh, this, is, this is pretty bad. It could be leveraged to go out and do other attacks. This could be leveraged to do some mining. This could be leveraged to steal some, uh, some data off the wire, sniff some packets. So it's an interesting one. Yep, so uh, what we're going to do here is start digging in and figure out if it's real. So here's the CVE, we'll leave links to all this so you guys can uh, test as well. And we see here's the CVE, and this is the important part when you're doing these is, is there a proof of concept in here? Oh, so, and this is fairly new. So like if you go up to the top, this, oh, yeah. is, this is what the, the 24th, so this is today. Yep, this right? is about 24 hours old roughly, so this yeah. is. Fresh knowledge dropped today, 20, uh, September 24, 2019. We're dropping it uh, right here. <laughs> it's interesting. So I went, and I'll pull up, I took and put together, just copy and pasted this code, looked at it. It looks pretty straightforward. It's in Python. And uh, you specify the parameters on there, saying, all right, here's what it sends over. And I need a good username and password. Now, this is where a little bit of confusion, because it seems to need the root password. Uh, but let's look real quick what happened. As soon as I ran the code, this is the first problem I ran. So I ran this and we, I spun up a host real quick. Like she switch over the screen. I have my lab. Here's my PFSense lab. Here is, I created a user for Xavier. I have a user for me. Admin disables kind of the default setup, uh, but we want to, you know, go through and test this. And actually we'll go ahead and re-enable this. We tried it both ways and you don't get to know the results until we get to the code running part. So let me switch back over. That's now set up. But this is the first problem we, I ran into. So the first part is, and this is, I like to test everything under default conditions. I mean, granted I changed a port, that's not hugely a uh, big deal, but the way his code is set up, it does not allow for the certificate to be unverified. So that was kind of the first stumbling block and I'm not great at Python, but Xavier knows Python. So I'm going to switch back over to Xavier now here. Yeah, and actually one of the things that I know, actually bring your screen back up because there was oh, sure. one thing that I noticed um, when this guy actually broke down the code. So a part of his uh, exploit DB, um, pull up the, uh, the actual exploit DB uh, page there. He, at the top, digs into exactly how he went about finding this, right? So he knows that um, the PFSense user with the UID zero, which in most systems, uh, zero means like root, right? Like that's right. the first user that gets created. So then when you scroll down a little bit into his static analysis, he digs into some of those, uh, those different methods that he knows can be called over this, uh, this transport layer. And what he sees is he finds the admin UID zero is allowed or regular with necessary permission. When I read this, I don't find the or, I find the and. I see if it set user entry UID and user entry not equal zero and has privilege of uh, XML RPC HA sync, which I guess is basically what, they're, what, what that says. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Um, it's saying that they're able to go ahead and do something, right? Uh, so that's, that's fun. So when I scrolled down and I looked a little bit more, I saw this eval and I went, oh boy. Uh, somebody put an eval in some PHP code. That is scary. And then I went to read the exploit. So I want people to realize when you go to certain websites like ExploitDB, when you go to go download an exploit, you have to trim some things out sometimes, right? Like the exploit doesn't really start until, you know, the hash bang sign down there uh, next to Python. But right. anyway, nevertheless, um, another thing I noticed, you could pu pull up your code. Well, I'll pull up my code. Go ahead, stop sharing. Yeah. So I'm, I see when I look at this code, 
something very interesting. It asks for a host and it asks for a password. Now, we know from looking at the research that was associated with this at the top of this file that we're assuming we're using zero, the, the user ID of zero, which means that we're assuming we're using some kind of root user and or a user that has a permission to be able to do whatever that certain permission is that it needs to do, which I believe is a, a XML RPC specific uh, permission that is supposed to be used for high availability, uh, right? Yeah, that's what I, if I'm not mistaken, the privilege you're looking for is high availability sync because uh, that means that user has the privilege to write back and forth. It's also a little strange though, because so user root or admin as you're logging into the web interface are, are one and the same. It's admin when the web interface, it's root when logging in via SSH. Uh, but that level of privilege, if you have that password, you kind of have the keys to the kingdom. Right. So I'm thinking to myself like, all right, I've either I have keys to the kingdom or I'm really, really close to having keys to the kingdom. Um, but nevertheless, he found that um, if you go ahead here and make a call to the XML RPC.php directory, you should be able to do stuff. And it looks like it just takes a password. So I'm scratching my head and I'm like, how does it, how does it know what user has what permission, right? Like what? I'm not a PF since guru. I'm a hacker. So I don't <laughs> know. I'm assuming, well, maybe it's going to take this password and it just treats it like an API key. Nah. It's just going to go and see does anybody like, maybe it'll do if it has 17 users, maybe it'll do 17 u off user calls using the same password in the back end to see if one of them works. I don't know, but I found that to be a little odd. Also, what I found was that um, the, and the same thing that you found, the SSL certificate by default from this product requires it to be self-signed, correct? That is correct. So, you know, other than me, out of the non-default method was we did add where you see our host args are uh, plus 555. That's just a port number change because I don't leave uh, PF sense at the default port. Whenever I set it up, part of my process is put it at something other than 443. So we added that. But the fact that the person who wrote the CV didn't have the bypass self-signed because that's also a default condition. By default, HTTPS is enabled out of the box on PF sense. Uh, so, it also has a self-generated self-signed certificate. So yeah, we thought it was weird we had to add that because usually proof of concept code should be proof of concept, not a lot of tweaking concept. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm already finding myself like in tweak mode, right? So I right. went ahead and hard coded in the port for the, the environment that I was going to be attacking that you so graciously stood up. Thank you. <laughs> and another thing you'll notice here is I added something called a context. And this context is the thing that allowed me to be able to get around that bug that you ran into which was the SSL bug. So once I got past that, I was like, all right, cool. Let's see what this thing is doing. Um, so I'm digging in further. It goes to go and try and log in. It sets that to the parameter page. It looks for this string on that page. If it has that string, it's supposed to say wrong password. If it doesn't have that string, then it assumes I've logged in. It goes ahead and make a random, uh, a random GUID. Um, 32 characters long, and then makes a file called that.php where using our password, we actually run an exec, which should then do a get to the CMD um, uh, a parameter and be executed. So I'm like, all right, I understand that. That makes sense. Let's get her done. Another thing you'll notice is I had to do this twice because there's stage one and then there's also page, which then takes stage one and makes another call. So you'll need to um, take an account for uh, the context twice. I'm not sure you'll need this code twice. I'm pretty sure I just put it in here twice because I copy and paste it. Anyway, um, so I got to the running part of it, right? Which is everybody's fun. So now yeah. you have my password. Yep. Right. Oh man, oh, right there. <laughs> <Made it clear. laughs> Nice, simple uh, password. <laughs> nice, simple password. Since we already accounted for that port number, you just have to pass in the full URI to the the uh, the, the uh, PF sense that you want to hack, and you got to click enter, and bam, wrong password. So I'm like Tom, what's up, man? You give me the wrong password. Like, what do you want me to do? like? I can't log in except when I go here and I try and log in. 
the password actually does work. Um, you're going to have to take my word for it because Firefox is being a little slow right now. But <laughs> that is my password, right? So yeah, I can I can assure you Xavier's password does work. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm in my I'm in a situation where I'm like, okay, I have a vulnerable product that you say is vulnerable. I have your proof of concept. I've accepted your concept, and now I can't prove your concept. Now, mind you, this doesn't have a CVE number that has been, I think this is a reserved number right now, right? Yeah, it's a reserved number, which means it has not been vetted. Um, and one of the things I'm going to comment, I just went ahead and changed the admin password. So we had an Xavier login because we wanted to see if it worked with just other passwords being that. So I also just checked and made sure the admin is turned back on and set to PWNME for the password. So try it now. Let's see what happens. Well, that's interesting that you get a wrong password again. Very quickly too. Huh. So like, you know, I could TCP, like if I was to go about this to actually see what's happening, I would do a TCP dump and actually see what calls are being made, pump that in a wire shark, go ahead and follow the TCP stream and debug it. But to be honest with you, your proof of concept is supposed to work. Yeah, it doesn't work. And the other problem we have taking apart this proof of concept is, um, you know, we had to tweak it. Second, it needs root. That's, if I have That's root, why do I... Why do I need a Python script? I mean, granted, a Python script is going to make things rather convenient. I won't lie uh, to be able to push things from the command line, but I'm pushing it from the command line to something I already have full credentials and access to. So, um, like, don't you already have this ability just built into PFSense? Can't I just make a template and it's a PHP pony shell right there? Yeah. So let me um, jump over to uh, log. Is there in. like a file explorer inside of PFSense? Why do I need to do a remote file inclusion when I already have admin access, which allows me to log in remotely to add a file? Yeah, and that's. This is part of right oh, here. So there right you here, go. inside of PFSense uh, is the the ability to do this anyway. So it's kind of an odd thing. I kind of feel, and this is one of those things where people jump to conclusions and they may see a CV out there. Even though this is unpublished, it's one of those things and we're keeping an eye out for stuff. Uh, we see stuff pop up on radar because we're, you, it's kind of interesting to look at something uh, that hasn't maybe been fully published or that you hear from a forum or something like that and people will jump on it. But this is where due diligence comes in and basically you have a CV that requires, well, alleged CV, it's, not, it's <laughs> clearly not going to get confirmed here, but it requires, <laughs> you need root access and then you can pwn something. Oh, if I have root access, I've already pwned it. Like it's right. <laughs> So the uh, the common sense wins here. Um, keep your root password safe and your PF sense is safe. It doesn't matter if someone uh, can run uh, a command from the command line with probably some tweaking. We actually think uh, if we tweaked around with this a little bit, we could probably dig further. I'm sure we could, function. we could make his CVE actual CVE. <laughs> well, but it wouldn't be a CV still because by the way, it needs root access. Oh, by the way, I can right. see your car if you just give me your keys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't seem like much of a threat. No, it, it, it's really not. So you know, Tom's going to let me hack his Tesla. That's a much different thing or me hacking Tom's Tesla remote, right? Yeah. Or, or, or especially if I gave you the keys to it and then you just drive away with it. Now you're talking about something. It's not, it suddenly doesn't become a very interesting hack. If you can do something uh, malicious without any other knowledge, other than the fact that it is a PF sense box, then it'd be very interesting. So the good right. news is PF sense is still safe. Uh, I still recommend keeping your uh, web exposure to none like people open up ports all the time in the wan side the default in pf sense this is the secure way to do it is only opening lan and the default time you uh, log in with admin and pf sense it first thing it does is say you have to change this it makes you change the password so there is no default creds right so this way you know you don't end up with some default cred that people start configuring like a lot of other ones i used to love i think it's netgear that allows you to have admin and blank as the default and it just stayed that way forever you know <laughs> it's taking forever for companies to uh, kind of get better at this but uh, well, we you know hackers are going to want to put in a username and a password yeah. they're going to try and do password brute forcing so we'll just we just won't set a password that yeah, way they'll never really, break in because it used to be admin m i remember that like just a while ago when those came out it was more difficult to hack some of those because you will not really hack just to get around i'm like what is, what is the password it's not admin password it's not admin admin 
admin enter. Oh, oh. <laughs> so can't forget to try that one once in a while. But there you uh, go. like I said here, your PF sense is safe. So no, there's not a CV on there. Uh, we just thought this fun, this video would be a fun exercise to walk through kind of the process where someone says something, some of the vetting process. And, and you know what, Tom? It really is something that we just do as hackers all the time. We get on exploit DB and we go and we find things that are interest of us. If we have that technology available, or if we have friends with that technology, we poke at it. We see, hey, is this really work? Is this really a thing? Right? If it's really a thing, oh my God, let, for one, let's patch this thing. And then like, you know, let's potentially go play in environments where we legally can. But yeah. if it's not a thing, let's make sure that we allow the community to recognize that it's not a thing. So they aren't out, you know, worrying about patching something that isn't really a threat to them. Yeah, and, it's, and I wanted to give this as kind of a behind the scenes look how uh, like me and Xavier or, or the hacking community in general works together. Uh, you may see the news article, the release on some website, but this is the behind the scenes what actually happens to do that research to find it out. And like I said, one of the reasons we started tweaking it, it we didn't just dismiss it as a proof of concept not working. It's also sometimes those people are on to something. So it also made an interesting test environment for us to go, what if he's almost right? and he just forgot a little thing, you do this, and then it actually worked. That's why we kept playing with it for a while. We played with this for a while before we did the video. <laughs> and, um, but that we came to the conclusion that this is a, a, a nothing. So I mean, the moment that you need root, me and Tom were like, meh. We were dismissive with that, but we still pushed on because we went and set up like different users. To try yeah, to no, we spent another hour on it after that. Yeah, I know. And then we played with the, the concept of, because it requires a sync user, that there is an edge case where you create a user for high availability sync in certain uh, corporate environments where you have someone with less permissions, but it's a dummy user you create. So two firewalls uh, st stay in high availability mode because instead of using root, I have this in one of my other longer videos about high availability, you create a secondary user. So we thought, okay, that's the edge case he's testing for is where someone used a weak password internally and you're inside the network. And so this would, you know, I, we try to walk through the scenarios where this might come up. Um, but the whole exercise was all for nothing. But I, I feel better about PF Sense when all done. Because we did the whole test. We walked through the process. We had some fun. And uh, we feel as though it's, it's as secure now as it was before that person published this 24 hours ago. There you go. <laughs> so Deep that tight. was it. Um, check out more for hacking tutorials over on Xavier's channel. I'll make sure I'll leave a link below for all of that stuff. Uh, I'll throw a URL on the screen here for you. Uh, like and subscribe to his channel. Uh, you guys are watching this. So you're probably already liked and subscribed to mine. And we'll, we'll do more of this. Uh, if there's enough attention, we'll definitely do some more of this. And like I said, Xavier's been cranking out some content because I set up a lab. and Got a whole got lab. lab. Yeah. So we're building out more lab stuff because we work together on some of these. And we really want to poke at a lot more things. So we're going to yep. be doing that. So look for some upcoming videos. Awesome. All right, thanks. Take care. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you'd like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.